Big Breakfast News 805. Back to Johnny and Sarah for the newspaper review. Yay! Thank you very much indeed, Phil. Are you all right there, Phil? Oh, sorry, wrong side. Yes. You must know it's this side now, Phil. We're doing this together. This is our third year together, Phil. Yes, I'm, what can I, I'm what, sorry. Suddenly, I'm, you I decide on day hang four, my head in shame. you decide to look over there. <laughs> yeah, you know. Decides to just... Big night, was it? Flip you over. It was, it was big-ish. Right. Wait a second, I didn't even really probe and already I've got a bit of a result. <laughs> yesterday, uh, yesterday you were complaining about a sore throat, so is it better now after your my, night my, out? My, oh, thank you for your concern. It's a little better than it was yesterday, thank you, yeah. Can I just say, never be concerned about his health, ever. <laughs> I'm not asking, he is really is one of those health balls. Phil Gow, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I'm not strong. Don't ever be concerned about his health. Do you know, I can hear a cry, it's starting like rolling thunder. Free Let's take gander at today's papers. Here we go, Coxie. Uh, Guardian. Oh, how are you this morning, incidentally? I'm very good. Because viewers join us now. Little, oh, sorry, hello. A bit tired. But everyone says that, don't they, when they come on the show? Yeah, they do. You have to. Yeah, it's I'm one sorry, of those that's one of those... No, says, no things, I normally get up about five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always. It's a mad for it. Anyway, you're holding a paper that says, Coup crisis in Pakistan. Pakistan, the world's newest nuclear power. And it, it was a textbook coup, it was described as yesterday. They took over the uh, TV station. Uh, which is a good place, I always think, to start a coup. It's where I'm going to start mine. Um, <laughs> Pakistan, the world's newest nuclear power, is in the hands of a hawkish army general uh, whom the Prime Minister had attempted to dismiss hours before. Uh, these people, they're unhappy with the, the Prime Minister, of course, because the Prime Minister was having talks uh, with Bill Clinton trying to get the uh, nuclear testing stopped and he was for peace. Now, I don't know much about world politics, but what I do know... Big hat theory, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the size of those generals' hats. <laughs> and that, for me, spells danger. The larger and more colourful the leader's hat, the more dangerous he is. You look at Pinochet, yeah. Noriega, yeah. Gaddafi, all big hats. Scylla. Scylla. <laughs> no, he's, he's not quite that dangerous. <laughs> Turn it down a bit. Uh, so there we go. So I, who, who had Pakistan? Do you remember we did an end of the world sweepstake a while ago? Did you have Pakistan? I did, yeah. I tell you, you are looking sweet now, mate. <laughs> Great, isn't it? Yeah, because they've got nuclear, they've got tension with India. You must be, you must be made up. I'm laughing. You're laughing. <laughs> you really are. We've all got tennis in. You can get about 210 quid, that. Brilliant. Fantastic to spend on tin goods to stock up with. Powdered <laughs> milk. <laughs> anyway, powdered milk stuff, yes. Powdered egg. Powdered egg. Uh, Express. A point with death. The doctor accused of murdering 15 patients. Apparently, well, it says here, killed one while others sat in the waiting room. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, star, I'm the most hated man in Britain, says Martin Kemp, after a pensioner swore at him in a supermarket. Oh, no. <laughs> please, please, do not move. Yes, go on. Sorry, I've got you just... Can you see the picture of Mandy and Mo? Is it just me or is Mandy going for a tonguey? <laughs> oh, oh, my yes, word! I would say it's very unlikely. <laughs> very, very unlikely indeed. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. That's all right. But, you know, it's well worth pointing that out. Okay. So I can point out some likely. Oh, yeah. uh, the doctor <laughs> accused him. Anyway, uh, I'm the most hated man in Britain. Martin Kemp, after a uh, pensioner, swore him in a supermarket. It, it, fact and fiction, uh, Coxie. People Imagine. really don't know the difference. People just don't know the difference. We had the radio show yesterday. is not playing any more Spandau songs. Because <laughs> that's going to really hurt Steve. <laughs> Madness. Anyway, there, there is more EastEnders news we get in here. This is just to show how, how ridiculous the situation is getting. EastEnders death rap victim, Matt Rose, has, re has received surprise support from Coronation Street's Weatherfield One. So Deirdre from ITV... <laughs> it's gone mad! It's just... Anyway, uh, Deirdre uh, Ratched underwent her own prison hell last year. It was prison hell, it really was. It wasn't a prison hell. She was sat in a trailer waiting to do her scenes. Um, uh, can I just say the doctor denies all charges uh, in headline two this morning? That's why I said apparently. I think I did cover myself there, there, producer. Not that you've spoilt the flow. Um, it's eventually released after a campaign led by the Daily Star. Uh, Deirdre was. Now Deirdre rebuilding her life in the street. What? Said, I sympathise having been in the position myself. What? It's still going on because my appeal is looming. I know how Matthew must be feeling. What? <laughs> but he's just lounging in his trailer waiting for the next scene. <laughs> There's also been cards, apparently, from Norman Stanley Fletcher, the Tenco 10, and uh, a Mr Lawrence uh, warns him that Christmas in jail can be far from merry. <laughs> um, a woman of 65... This is an extraordinary story, winging its way from around the world. Uh, a woman of 65 died from exposure after her wine grower husband tied her to a tree to guard his vines following a spate of death. <laughs> I don't mind that. He tied his wife to a tree. I don't mind that. 
I were brought up guarding cattle. Of course you were. But you were uh, never, uh, your dad never lashed you to a five-bar gate. Did didn't he? <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. Admit he didn't. He did. What you're saying about your father is a serious thing to say. Your father did not, as a child, tie you to a five-bar gate. Admit it on national television, Coxie. <laughs> He didn't. He didn't. There we go. Exactly. But this bloke did. Not to you, but to a woman of 65. Uh, Dimitri Clota told police in Romania he only tied his wife um, to the... Uh, <laughs> he only tied his wife to the tree because she kept coming back inside the house. <laughs> oh, Tom, get back out there! What else could he do? What, what, he, he was left with no option, exactly. was he, Lewis? What could he do? He needed wine, he needed money, the wives kept coming back in, showing lack of keenness. It's pathetically slack of her. Well, now she's gone. And that's it. Um, Deirdre's photo casebook. I don't normally bring your attention to Deirdre's photo casebook because I do enjoy it. It's something I enjoy privately, on my own. Special moments. Uh, but have a look today. Here's, here's picture one. Are you ready? Uh, Coxie, if you'd like to uh, take the female lead. Uh, he says, I I've promised to meet some friends today, so I'll have to get going. Have a lie-in, if you like. Oh, OK, thanks, Eddie. Thinks. I was hoping we could do something together. Never mind. Later. Next one, please. This is later. It's 3am and he still isn't home. Now, where the hell is he? That's from Deirdre's photo case book in the sun. What's that last question again? Where the hell is he? I'll tell you where he is. He's in Miriam's photo case book <laughs> in the mirror. <laughs> Same guy. <laughs> here we go. He says here... Give me sexy, sultry, that's it. Ooh, being ravished might be less exhausting. Have a look at the composite shot at the end here. Uh, we should have the two of them there. Have they rigged that up, Giles? Yeah. Here we go. It's coming. There we go. It is the same yeah. guy. Yeah. Well, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. So it's nice that we've solved Deirdre's photo case book uh, for her. Where is he? He's in the mirror. <laughs> OK. Uh, now, Maori singer at World Cup triggers row. Uh, the, the singing of the New Zealand national anthem in Maori at last weekend's Rugby World Cup match between the All Blacks and England at Twickenham has caused controversy in New Zealand. I went, actually, I, I think I caused quite a lot of trouble there. I didn't realise rugby games are very different to football games. Mm. And I was, I was at the rugby game and I was chanting to the New Zealand players, does your landlord know you're here? <laughs> On the grounds, a lot of New Zealanders over here are barmen. And, and you're uh, working in that pub in yeah, yeah, Exactly, bush. and it went down really badly. I got oh. prodded in the back. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I did. Like I mean, that? Yeah, really prodded. Like that. I don't know why. But anyway, the row has been joined by Prime Minister Jenny Shipley. But the thing that really gets me is that we had this big... Uh, the, the, the English people, we weren't allowed to sing Swing Low. And when they did last weekend, it was pathetic. They had this high-energy version of, you know, Swing Low. The New Zealanders now, they're going to have... Two national anthems and the hacker before. We get, like, the national anthem and that's it. Oh, it's no, pathetic. No, we get that high energy thing. They were sort of like that. And Eddie's, oh, you can see the New Zealanders laughing. The England players are sort of like that. <laughs> <laughs> if you're sat around at home, call the England rugby team. <laughs> <laughs> it's pathetic. Swing low. <laughs> The New Zealanders, you can see them laughing. They're just laughing at us. They do their Maori war dance. What do we offer? A bit of high energy. It's pathetic. We should have our own hacker. We should have boozed up cleaning ladies in tabards. Yeah. Bulldogging yeah. with big mutton chops. Yeah. yeah, that'd sort them out. Uh, here's a letter for you. The England rugby team's answer to the All Blacks hacker should be the birdie song with Richard Cockrell leading the actions. That's from Jim Watson. Uh, do you know That's all I've got time for this morning. I've spent, do you know I really have spent too long on things? Oh, except to say... <laughs> you know there's been a pension, pension of anger over this media 73p raise they've had? Which is pathetic. It's disgusting. It's pathetic, the people who made this country what it is. The wreck it is. Uh, families awoke yesterday to find digestive biscuits taped to every house, wall and road sign in Trinity Street, Norwich. <laughs> That's the sign for the pensioner revolution, isn't it? <laughs> it's so obvious they've been going on a secret code. Now the digestives are out. I don't know, before the Indian mutiny, I think they made a special form of chapati, didn't they? And that's how the English authorities got onto the fact there was a revolution and mutiny coming. It's what the pensioners are doing. So if you see digestives, take them down. It's, <laughs> seriously, yeah, like, ah. it's the grey revolution. Big roll. Yeah. <laughs> Could be worse. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that is the papers now. I think that's all. I, I, there's so many good stories. I'm, no, oh, I've got to get into the pun down. I've been oh. ordered. They're really cross with me. Here's Ooh. the pun down. Yeah. Yeah. Except to 
say. Uh, <laughs> the Star Wars fan, a Star Wars fan dressed as Darth Vader has been charged with having an offensive weapon, a lightsaber. After he was arrested by Hungarian police, uh, they asked Sandor Sabo where he was from, and he replied, from a galaxy far away. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, here's the pun down. This is the pun down now. Um, mirror story. A man smashes the British pumpkin growing record. Good on you. The pun says... The pumpkin. Yeah. Some story. A cathedral is selling Millennium Sparkling Wine. Yeah. Do you prefer champagne or sparkling wine? Champagne. I prefer sparkling wine any day. The pun says... <laughs> Let us spray. Yeah. St I like red sparkling wine. <laughs> Star story. Uh, this is, do you know what? I've got to tell you, we've got some genius. I forgot to tell you this. There's some genius coming your way now. A an amazing pun. Oh, God, really? Yeah, no, this is, this is, it's in the star. Do you want me to do a trumpet? Go on, then. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, next time, ask me if you want me to do the trumpet again. Do you want me to do your trumpet? No. <laughs> A zoologist can halt stampeding elephants with a... No, wasn't that good, Sarah? Yeah, go over there, Sarah, cos the sh it's trumpet shame. <laughs> over there. No, behind the bar, Sarah. No, don't go, ah. Oh. She failed on the trumpet impression. If you're going to say, I'm going to impersonate a trumpet, do it properly, all right? <laughs> Hide behind your photo on the top there. Oh, I'm in too deep. No, don't, Brittany. <laughs> You've got a case of the Britneys behind there. Oh. Is there like... Don't tell me there's an older fella behind there. Hit me, baby, one more time. <laughs> no, don't. Don't, because there's an old fella behind there. Do you know what? It, it, this pun is a genuine bit of genius. Ignore Cox's trumpet. A zoologist can halt, st halt stampeding elephants with a didgeridoo. So, elephant stampede. He can play his didgeridoo. He's made out of a bit of a drain pipe. And the elephants, they stop stampeding. OK, it is genius, but you wait for this pun. It, it's amazing. Come on. <laughs> the pun says... Trump call to reverse charge. Oh! Whoa there! What has happened at the start? <laughs> Trump call to reverse charge. Oh! Yes. She, when I read that, it was like being shot through the forehead with a diamond-tipped bullet. Thank you. It'll win the week.